So I found some video on my old XR phone of where I put a soft start kit in this heat pump unit. I'm going to get it edited up and, and put out there for you guys. Uh, but I wanted to make this little intro clip to explain. It's, it's old. It was in April of 2020. I used to have a three ton heat pump that sat about right here. And the older deck was about seven inches taller. The heat pump was also bigger being a three ton. So it was about right here. And I had to have it bonded to the pool bonding because it was so close to it. And when we went to get the new deck in, we wanted the new deck lowered. So you walk out the back door and step down and it's not level. That way when you get snow that builds up on it, it doesn't go right in front of the, the sliding door. So I hired a company to come and move the unit from here to here, which they did. And then I wake up one day and it's probably like 80, 85 in the house. I come out, the fan's running, the compressor is not. It was an R22 unit. He told me it would be like four or five grand just to replace the compressor. And if anything ever happened in the future, I'd probably be screwed because R22 is going away before long where places won't even be able to get it anymore. So we figured at a $4,000 repair, we might as well just throw in a few extra and get a whole new unit put in. So they put in this two and a half ton 410A. That's a temp star unit. And the first thing I noticed was that it did okay. It wasn't the R22. Um, the next year was, was terrible. So when it was like 95, it was not comfortable in the house. The humidity would not get below like 58. And the temperature would go up, not down. So I'd watch the thermostat in the house. I'd have it set on like 72. And it would be 73 and then 74. Problem is the TXV valve went out of it. They fixed it. And it's done a lot better since. Like you can really tell there's air conditioner in the house now. Uh, another piece of it is when they sized it, he said the three ton unit was way too big. Whoever put that in had no clue what they were doing. Two and a half ton is fine. This house is about a thousand, thousand to eleven hundred square feet. And he says a two and a half ton is perfect for that. Didn't seem like it because I had maybe six inches of insulation in the attic and it was the actual pink shredded from back in the 70s when they built these. So it wasn't that wasn't that good at all. So I had a company come out. I'll put his link in the description. They did an awesome job. Put about 12 to 13 inches of the cellulose up there. And last week it was like 85, 90 degrees very hot very humid it was it was so nice in the house i could tell a huge difference just from the insulation that was put in so i'll show you the video on this one it doesn't go into detail with the wiring because the instructions are that detailed it just kind of has me walking you through what i'm doing with this particular unit that had a start capacitor on it uh, but it does not show wire by wire insulation but the, the instructions when you buy the kit does and i'll leave the link in the description where i bought it Okay folks, today I'm going to be installing a soft start kit in my heat pump. And there's multiple reasons why one would want a soft start kit. My reason is that I have a generator and when it kicks on, it really bogs the generator down a little bit. Too much for comfort, so much that the lights in the house will flick or flash. So we're going to put a soft start kit in it to loosen, lighten that load up a little bit. Right now I'm running on utility power. I'm going to go in the house, turn on the central air to get a test of how loud it is. So now we're going to remove the plate and then we're going to test what the amps are when it kicks on. Now 
Well, typically on the back of your inner plate, you'll have your wiring diagram, schematics and everything there handy. I'd take a picture of this like the day after they put it in because over time this will start to fade off and you're not going to be able to see it. So inside the unit, you've got your dual capacitor, start capacitor. This is all live. I haven't disconnected anything yet. This is going to be the L side of the contactor. This is the contactor. So this is my main wires coming in. This will be the T side of the contactor. Now we're going to find the black common that runs to the compressor. And that's what we're going to put our clamp meter on. And it looks like it is. So we got us a reading of 68 amps, which isn't too bad. So now I'm going to run the house on the generator and turn it on and let you guys hear what the generator does when it kicks on. This is the soft start kit by hyper engineering you see the black mark on there 230 volt 8 to 16 fla so you're going to go to the sticker that's on the side panel somewhere on your central air unit this is a temp star two and a half ton and you can figure that out from the model number that's on here h means heat pump 30 based off of the uh, instruction manual 30 means two and a half ton you're going to be looking for this rla number 13.5 and then you're going to match that to what size you need 8 to 16 fla so the fla your fla is your full load amps and your RLA is your rated load amps. So this is the box it comes in. Comes with uh, awesome step-by-step -step instructions. Colored instructions to include pictures. You got your unit. Some additional wires. The mounting brackets on the back. So step one is going to be to disconnect your power. You should have a disconnect somewhere on your house. Pull this out. It's got two fuses in there. Now there is no power running to your unit, but you need to test that just to be sure. These capacitors, obviously, the name capacitor means that this stores power and this stores power. That's the whole point in starting the compressor. They build charge, they hold charge, and then when it kicks on, that's the massive drain that you're seeing that starts the compressor. So these will hold power. So even though your power is disconnected, make sure you have an insulated screwdriver. This is your contactor, you can push in and it is not starting, which also confirms that you have no power. But you could still possibly have power stored in the capacitors. This is the run capacitor. This is the start capacitor. The way you're gonna discharge these 
is you're just going to short it out by putting the screwdriver across two of the terminals and if there is power in there it'll spark or pop and that'll discharge it so on the start capacitor you're just going to get up under there and touch the two nothing sparking that should be done and then you're going to go from common to herm and then common to fan so this is your common this is your herm and this is your fan fan Herm, common. Discharge, you're going to go from common to herm. Nothing there. And then common to fan. Nothing there. So you should be 100% able to stick your fingers in there and not get zapped. But I'm going to use insulated needle nose to pull all of my terminal, terminals off. A couple reasons. One, if you can't get your hand on it, you take a chance of pulling the wire off the terminal. Or if you put the pliers on the metal piece of the terminal and pull them off, you're not going to pull the wire out of the terminal. All your, your power removed, your start capacitor needs to come off. You cannot have a start capacitor and a soft start. The soft start has a start capacitor built into it. So you need to remove the start capacitor. Okay. So when you're looking for a place to mount this, this is a, it's like a piece of resin or plastic. You want to make sure that when you put your mounting screws in, you're not drilling into a coil and leak out all your refrigerant that you're not drilling into an electrical motherboard or something in there. So you want to check behind, make sure that the screws aren't going to go in there and damage anything behind it. These are the same two self-tapping screws that I took off of the start capacitor. I'm just going to reuse them. I may even be able to reuse the same exact holes so that I know I'm not going to drill through anything. The same existing holes that was in there. Clicks right in there. So there's three wires that come off your compressor itself. If you look down in your unit, I have a black, a yellow, and a blue. The yellow is going to be my run, the black is going to be my common, and the blue is going to be my herm. You can verify that by running, tracing your wires. Here's your yellow, this is your run, this is your common, this is going to the herm. So if you take your common off your capacitor and trace it back it goes to the run on this unit So I got the soft kit installed. It's done 100%. I'm so blown away by the difference that it made. Sometimes with the camera and the microphone, you can't really pick up the, the, the sound as good. Sometimes it's way more than it seems like it is. A lot of people say the generator is loud. It's not really that loud. Just a microphone makes it seem like it is. These instructions, step-by-step -step instructions, 100% on point. Probably one of the easiest installs I've done. There's a good bit of wires, nothing to be alarmed about. Know the difference between your run off of your compressor 
which in my case was a yellow, and your start. Compressor's got the three wires we talked about earlier. Don't cross the start and the run. Make sure you got those right. Fairly simple install. This was kicking on at about 68 or 69 amps. Which knocked the generator down a little bit. Enough to make the lights flick. And you can hear the, you know, like it misses and you can hear it spin back up. The generator, that's completely gone. You cannot even tell when this heat pump kicks on at this point so makes me feel a lot better i do have battery backups in the house on the tv and if there's any drop in voltage anything it makes those kick on and they were actually kicking on thinking that it needed to because the amount of power that it would pull from the rest of the house would make them go into safe mode and kick on they don't even they don't do that now and those battery backups are set for specs for a computer which is the highest that you can set them and they don't kick on at this point